Jan passed away in a bicycling accident. It was like losing a brother to me. I would love for him to be here and to see what's happening. I think he'd be very proud. I think he would have a tremendous sense of fulfillment because he undertook this for his son and for other people with diabetes. Jan really did not know what he could do to, to help his son you know, get a better glucose control. And he approached me and said, we want to get a team together and see if we can come up with a better way of monitoring glucose continuously and non-invasively. Testing automatically and painlessly was the real promise of, of what Jan's vision was. Over the next couple months, we looked at Raman spectroscopy, which started a collaboration now, which has lasted for eight years. The Raman systems that everyone has been used to seeing before we came along, they're on optical tables, giant four by eight foot tables. Since we've started working in this field, we've reduced its size by a factor of 10 or 20,000 now with our small portable system that you can wear on the body. What the device does is sends a beam of light into the skin, and this causes a very unique fingerprint of colors of light to come back to the device that we can measure. The thing about Raman spectroscopy is that it's very specific to the chemical species that you're looking for. The sensor itself has to be an amazing piece of technology to be able to separate that tiny signal from that noise, and that's what we have done. What we're trying to do is take that value of that continuous monitor and make it less invasive or intrusive into a person's lifestyle. My doctors tell me that my diabetes was a result of my cancer. It affected my pancreas, it affected my endocrine system. Her blood sugar was over 1,200. And we got the, uh, the crash course on how to control your diabetes. I also have two cousins on each side of the family who are both type one. No matter how many times we took her to the doctor, they kept looking at, uh, well, she's got a sore throat, she might have strep. And we found out um, after taking her to the emergency room that she had type 1 diabetes. Sometimes as an engineer, you get wrapped up in all the little details of, you know, what is this resistor doing and what's, what's going on in the system here. And uh, every so often you step back and, and see the bigger picture and realize that uh, you're making this product that's going to be monumentally important. We're trying to develop a product that you can wear it and it's going to be giving you a continuous readout nominally every eight to ten minutes and, and you don't have to worry that the, that the answer you're getting is wrong or you're not using it properly. We really see an opportunity to, to change the way that diabetics monitor and manage their lives. I want that for my daughter. I want her to have that kind of ability in life to not worry about what she has going on inside of her body and live a normal life. This is going to give you more information that you might have wanted, but just were not able to have and able to get. I didn't hold it against anyone out there that we were doubted. We should have been doubted uh, until we could prove the point that we actually have something that works and works on a large population of people. That kind of culture of never taking anything at face value, but just making sure that it's absolutely rigorous, I think is what helped make us successful in the end. I have huge trust in our team. We can see it through, we're honest, and I think we're gonna get there.